Creating rocks in Blender can be extremely difficult. Just kidding. Let me show you how to make this scene procedurally in Blender. So, if we delete all these default objects and press Shift A to add an icosphere and go into the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier with the level set to 5 for both viewer and render and then add a displace modifier. Click here to create a new texture and click on this icon to go into the texture tab then change the type to Voronoi and distance matrix to distance squared then increase the size to about 1.5 go into the front view by pressing 1 and then jump to edit mode by pressing tab we cannot see our displacement here for that in the displacement modifier click on this icon to view the modifier in the edit mode now let's scale our rock and also scale it on the z-axis so we have a taller shape then place it something like this then take a cube and add a subdivision surface modifier change the levels to 5 for both viewer and render then add a displace modifier create a new texture and change the noise type to Voronoi and distance metric to distance squared then increase the size to all the way to and click on this icon to view the modifier in the edit mode now if you select this rock and move it, the shape of the rock will change. Which is good, because this way we can create as many rocks as we want and they will all look different. So let's split this editor horizontally by clicking and dragging from this corner. And then change this view to top view by pressing 7. Now we can start placing our rocks. This is one of the best way to quickly create rocks for these kind of scenes. Now let's select our main rock and scale it up a bit so we have a nice composition. Now let's add a backdrop for our scene, add a plane, scale it up. Then select this edge and extrude it on the z-axis by pressing E and Z. Now select this edge and press Ctrl and B to give it a bevel and use your scroll wheel to add segments. Now let's go out of the edit mode and right click on the object and select shade smooth. Also let's scale it on the x-axis so we have a wider background. This rock seems to be inside the smaller rock, so let's select it and reposition it. Now it's looking good. Now let's add a camera to our scene. Press Shift A to add a camera. Press Ctrl Alt 0. Then press N to open this side panel. Go into the View tab and turn on Camera to View. In the Render tab, change the Render Engine to Cycles and the Device to GPU and change the max samples for viewport to a low number like 8 because we don't need so many samples to preview our scene. Now let's add some lights. Press Shift A and add a spotlight. Move it above our rock like this then go into the properties and set the power to 5000. Then in the beam shape change the blend to all the way 1. Also increase the spot size a little bit to get a nicer fall off. Now let's add an area light. Move it up and scale it. Then go into the right view by pressing 3 and rotate this light like this so it is facing our stone. And from the top view, move it to the side so the light is coming from the right side. Then in the world tab, change the strength to 0. Duplicate this area light and place it behind the rock so we have some light on our background. And also reduce the intensity. Now our lighting is looking good. So let's start shading. Let's select the background and give it a new material. In the base color, give it a slightly blue tint. And reduce the roughness so we have some reflections. Now let's select these smaller rocks and add a new material. Press Shift A and add a noise texture node. Select this node and press Ctrl T. By the way, if the shortcut is not working for you, make sure to go into the edit mode, then preferences and search for node angular add-on. Let's connect the object coordinates to the mapping node instead of generated. Ctrl Shift and left click on the noise texture node to view it in the viewport. Now let's add a bump node. 
and connect our noise texture in the height input and then connect the result to the normal input of our shader and reduce the strength of the bump. Let's see what we get. We have some detail here but it doesn't look that good. We can make it look a lot better by adding another noise texture node here. The idea here is to distort the coordinates before they are fed into the noise texture node. Increase the detail. So let's reduce the scale of this noise and increase the detail. And then in the bump node, increase the strength. Now we have some nice detail. Because we are using a non-destructive workflow, you can go into the modifiers tab and increase the level of subdivision at this stage also. So let's make it 6. Now we have some nice details on our rocks. For the base color, add a geometry node and a color ramp node. Then connect the pointiness output in the factor value. Control shift and left click on this node. Drag these sliders till we only have this texture on the edges. Now let's add a mix color node. Connect the color ramp in the A input and the noise texture in the B input. Change the type to multiply. Now we have subtle breakup in our edges. But it's not that much visible. So let's duplicate this color ramp node and adjust the sliders to add some contrast in the noise. Now we can see some breakup in our edges. Add another mix color node and connect this node in the factor value. And then click on the B color and give it a darker color. Our edges are not that visible so let's increase the intensity of our mask by adding a math node set to multiply. And then increase the value. Now we can see our edges better. Let's make our rocks a little brighter and give them a slight blue tint. Our rocks look good now, so let's select the main rock and add a new material. For this rock, we need to divide the material in two parts. One which is the rock texture and second which is this heat up effect. So let's work on the rock part first. Select our small rocks and add a frame node. Then select all the nodes and drag them into the frame window and press F2 to rename the frame. We'll call it Rock Shader. Then select all these nodes, press Ctrl C to copy, then go into our main rock material and paste them here. Let's move these nodes to the side. Ctrl Shift left click to view this. Looks like we need to adjust our bump for this rock. So let's go here and increase the scale value for this noise texture node. And then reduce the strength of the bump. Also let's reposition this light a bit and increase the intensity of this light. Then duplicate it and place it on the left side and reduce the intensity of it so we can see some detail there. Switch to shader editor. Now let's work on the heat up effect. Let's add an emission node. We know that we can use emission node to make our object glow. But for this scene using only the emission node is not enough. We need to build a shader so it looks like that our rock is actually heating up from the inside. To make it look like that we need to find a way to change the emission color as the temperature rises. And to get the color from the temperature we can simply use a black body node. If we try to change these values, we don't see any effect because these values are based on Kelvin scale and are in thousands. To have better control of this, add a math node set to multiply. We'll use this first value as the input value and the second value as the multiplier. Let's change the second value to 1000 and then if we change the first value, we can see the color is changing. We also want to control the strength of the emission with the color temperature. 
But if we connect this node to the strength, even the tiniest change in the value will make it look so bright because we are using a multiplier to control the color of our emission. We need to remap this range. So let's add a map range node and set the from max to a really big number like 10,000. Now if we change this value, you can see the color and the emission is changing together. But our emission is looking quite dull. To fix that, in the map range node, change the to max value to 10. It will work as a multiplier. Now our emission is looking good. Now for the final part, we need to make this texture to make the effect look much more appealing. So let's add a noise texture node and press Ctrl D to get the mapping set up. Then change the noise type to rigid multifractal and reduce the scale of the noise to make the pattern look bigger on our object. Increase the gain and detail, which will give us this really nice texture on our noise. And also if you want, you can increase the luminarity value, which will increase the detail further. Now let's create a mask to define where this effect will be visible. Add an ambient occlusion node and set it to inside. Add a color ramp node, then move the black slider to the right to add some contrast. You can play around with the distance to increase or reduce the fall off. Now let's add a mix color node. Connect the noise in the A input and our color ramp in the B input. Change the blend mode to multiply and increase the factor to all the way one. Now to connect this texture with our emission setup, add a math node or we can just copy this one. Connect the texture in the value one and our multiply node in the value two. Then connect the result in both black body and the map range node. Now if we increase the value of our emission, you can see this really nice texture. But right now it's looking super black on the edges. So let's go here and reduce the factor value. Something like this. And add a color ramp node after our noise and change the black value to a darker gray. Now our texture is looking much more organic. We can increase or reduce the value to see the effect of our emission. Now for the last part, let's add these two shaders together. Add a add shader node, connect the emission shader in the first input and the rock shader in the second input and view the shader in the viewport. Then go here. We can actually add a frame for this multiply node. Drag this multiply node in that frame, press N to open this side panel and in the node tab, turn on color and give it a color. So it's easier to identify this node in the node graph. Now we can see the effect of our shader. Now for the final render, set the max samples to 256. Make sure denoise is enabled. And in the performance tab, set the tile size to 512. Then go up here and hit render.